You're gonna feel better soon. Yes, you are. Hi, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I groomed this uh, severely matted Yorkie cross. She is very, very matted. And using my videos, if you if you're new to my channel, my videos are all about grooming dogs in great condition. Um, the majority of them, but this is the first time in a long time that I've actually groomed a dog um, this matted. It's it's really severe, so I'm gonna have to really shave that off and shave it pretty closely. So I thought I would just show you since I don't really have this type of grooming on my channel, and um, hopefully you can learn something. And uh, if you're a dog owner or a groomer, you can educate your clients not to let their dogs get in this condition. I educated um, her owner because she had no idea. This is the first time I'm grooming this dog. Um, she had no idea how often to groom the dog. If you have a dog that has hair that constantly grows, or any dog, and they need regular grooming, especially a dog that needs their hair cut. Um, you know, the shorter you go, the longer they can go between groomers, like maybe eight weeks. Um, if you want your dog to look like a nice little puppy clip, they got to come every four weeks or three or four weeks or five to six weeks. Um, but never let you get your dog in this state. You can't even see the skin on some areas. It's, it's very painful for the dog and to take it off the aftermath of after the grooming, the dog might be scratching itself, uh, the skin might be red, there might be sores under there, I, I don't know. Um, so please don't let your dog get in this condition. You should see the professional groomers at least every eight weeks. Um, if you keep your, your dog's hair, you know, short, it can go eight weeks. If you keep a little longer, it should get groomed often. So I'm going to show you what the dog looks like with all the mats. So this is the rump of the dog. You can see just, like, I can't even find an opening here. So I'm going to have to find one somewhere, probably up here. But anywhere, it's all knotted. That's all tight mats. I'm just hoping the dog um, will let me get this kind of mats off because sometimes it's very painful and the dog will lash out at me. You see how bad that is? And check out the ear. The ear right here, that's one big clump. And with the ears, if shaving the ears, um, you have to watch out for hematomas because when they're shaved, the blood will rush to the tips and and cause a little bit of discomfort for, discomfort for the dog and the dog will shake its head and cause a hematoma. The ends of the ears can bleed. So, yeah, i got to be careful with that. But this poor little girl is so knotted. The chest is really bad. All right, so I'm going to get started. All right, so I'm going to start off using my 7F blade. This is a, let's see if I can focus on it, um, 7F blade. This is usually the blade I do short clips on. I don't go any shorter than this, unless I'm doing poodle feet or poodle faces, of course. But I believe this dog is very matted, so I'm gonna have to probably use shorter blades in other areas, on, you know, certain areas of the dog. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm sure I can get through the back with this, but this is, um, you know, basically a shave down a blade and number 7F. It doesn't leave very much hair. Alright, since I don't know this dog and she might be a little bit nervous, I just kind of attached her to this other clip over here. It's just basically going to hold her still instead of her like backing up or spinning around. Just gives a little bit more, you know, makes her a little bit more stable. It doesn't hurt her. I'm not strangling her. So I'm just going to turn the clip on and see what she does. Good girl. Very good girl. It's pretty calm. All right, I'm going to try the clip starting on the back here. So I'm just going to look for an opening here. The back is not as matted as the rest of her, but it's still matted. There's no way I can even get a brush through that. So I'm just doing little short little clips to find an actual like opening, like an opening in her fur. There, looks like I found one. There we go. And look at this. What a very good girl you are. So it's going to go right down her back. I can feel the tightness up there. I'm hoping that a 7F will go through the coat so I don't have to go as short. So now I'm just going to come down the sides. 
And what I'm doing is I'm actually trying to feel if I feel any, you know, lumps, bumps, warts, or, or anything on the dog, sores. She's a young dog, so I don't think she really have, you know, very many warts, but she could have anything under her fur. She can abscesses, maggots, fleas. Actually, her skin looks pretty good. I don't see any signs of fleas right here anyways. But there, I got that started. And look how much hair has already come off. So I'm going pretty slow. And again, I'm, I'm feeling, I, I could feel if I'm gonna, you know, bang into anything. I'm not, I'm not like just zipping along like I would if the dog wasn't matted. Kind of like peeling it off. Hey, it'd be great though if this 7F goes right through this. Because I really want to avoid um, using a shorter blade. As it can, you know, cause, uh, you know, skin issues, scratching, biting. And sometimes what you have to do is kind of just separate this like that. You see? And now we have two areas to work on. So I can go this way. Pick up that chunk and work my way down what a good girl you are you're so good wow amazing some dogs that come in like this are not very good for grooming because they're not used to it and you see how it creates these little things here i just pull it pull it so i can open it apart There we go. Wow, we're gonna see your thigh coming down your leg. And again, I'm just pulling it apart. Wow, I can't believe I got that far. All right, let me see if I can get the bump part off. I can't believe how good she is. And another thing that I do constantly is I check to make sure it's not hot. I have other blades of the same size and I will switch them if they get hot. You don't want to burn the dog because when you're clipping like this, it takes longer and um, you know the blade can get hot. So you really don't want to add a hot blade, you know, into this poor dog's skin that's already suffering from being so matted. And I can get the tail off of this, that's perfect. Okay, gonna... Very good. So I'm just going to take that right off the tail. Look at that. See all this? Sorry, my phone keeps dinging, but i got to keep it on. Look at all that. You're going to look half your size, aren't you? So now I'm going to see if I can actually get this off. I might have to go shorter. Let's just try. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to try a different blade. Now something I want to show you that uh, sometimes that I do, and you have to be very careful, you might want to get a scissor with a uh, blunt tip if you're not very experienced of shaving them at dogs. But see how this is all one piece? I want to I want to cut it down the middle so I can get some, some uh, separation of the mats. So what I'm doing is I'm going to like Obviously, I know where the skin is, right? So you don't want to cut the skin. And I'm just going to cut down. What I'm trying to do is cut the mat in half. You see? Hopefully you can see that. So now I have something to work with. I can shave it that way or shave it this way. And you can actually do that, uh, you know, anywhere you see a mat this tight. If you just want to kind of separate the mat to find a shaving area like that. So now I'm going to use my Brevora. This is adjustable. I can use a 40, 30, 10, 15, 9, I believe. So I'm going to put it on the 30. I just want to, actually maybe I'll put it on the 15. I just want to see if I can shave that off. And I'm doing it very gently. I'm hoping I can save a little bit of hair. Just to prevent the dog from biting at itself. So what I normally do is I try to use the 7F wherever I can and then I will use the shorter blade on areas like this. You know, instead of shaving the dog with this, you know, short, short blade all over, 
I um, I used the 7 up first. Yeah, I might have to come back to that because I'm not, not at the angle where I can get it. But anyways, I got that part off. And so a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so now I'm just going to try to take a little bit more off the sides here. Coming down. I'm pulling her skin upwards. I'm pulling the skin so that is tight. And always make sure to ask if the dog is spayed or not. If they're not spayed, they might have like the teats here that you can accidentally cut. Now I'm just gonna come on an angle here. Feel lighter already? Yeah, you can feel good. You must be so hot. So I'm just gonna kind of go back here. So I'm just slowly, kind of like, I guess I would call it chipping away, <laughs> chipping away at the knots here. And there, it's coming off. There we go. Got this main thing off. Using my 30. 30 is really short for a groin, so I'm actually trying not to go against the skin. I'm just going like under the knots because uh, that's really short. What you gotta do, what you gotta do. And it's coming off. Then again, I'm not, I'm not pressing. I'm not pressing hard on the skin in her little pee pee area here. Yeah, there we go. So there's still some hair there. There we go. Yay, we got that side. Wow, very good. Yay. Oh, I changed the blade as well. I got a nice, uh, fresh, cool one on. And you can also spray the blade with uh, coolant, with blade uh, coolant or oil. I do that when I'm grooming and I just don't show it on camera. Oh, now I gotta rip this apart. There we go. We're getting there. Almost one side. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to shave down her shoulder. This goes through pretty good. There. Alright, and it starts to get tighter as I go down further. So if this doesn't go through, I will use a shorter blade. Have to be careful of the um, under the armpits there. They got lots of loose skin, and so I'll just do short little strokes right here. Always look for the skin, and uh, you know know where you're going and know what's there. Wow, okay, it's coming off, there we go, alright, I can see the skin there, I'm just going underneath it, there we go, got a big chunk, got all that off, alright, now I'm going to just do her leg, 
Actually, the front leg doesn't look as bad as the back leg. There is a lot of matting underneath her armpits though. So I'm quite sure this will come right off. Let's see how she does. Some dogs don't like this to be done on their front legs. They don't like their legs to be touched. Can you move your head a little bit? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just, I'm actually feeling her, her body language. Like I'm feeling her being tensed. So usually I'll know if they're going to lash out. I can just feel them. Sometimes they'll pull, which is normal. You just gotta work with them. But um, I'm gonna have to use a shorter blade. I can just feel all that. I'm gonna use a 30 under here. Now the armpits, you gotta be so careful. It has a lot of skin, it moves. So sometimes you can get it just by pulling the skin like this or lifting the leg, which I'm gonna do. I lift the leg how, how they're comfortable. You know, if they can't move it this way, I'll hold it a different way. But she's um, actually holding it like this herself. So I don't yank, I don't pull. Yeah, it's pretty bad under here. Sorry if you can't really see, but uh, basically, I think I gotta go on the other side. Okay, I think she's getting itchy because she kind of wants to turn around and lick herself. So basically, I'm just doing little short little strokes. Can I just see? Look at that. How am I going to get that out? Sometimes you got to do a 40, you know? I feel so bad for this dog. I just want to keep these dogs when they come in like this, you know? It must feel so horrible for them to walk around like this. And she's doing so good as well. You're doing very, very good. Now, if I don't get it all right now, I'll definitely get it after I give her a bath. <laughs> We're getting there. Wow, look at that. All right, so I got her body, some of her tail, her legs. I just got to do the bottom of this leg, which is not matted. I'm just going to clip it up now. I'm using my 7 up. It wasn't really matted at the bottom, but it's all coming off. And this dog was not even like not even brushed. Um, I think they they tried to brush it, but it was too knotted, and the dog obviously didn't like it. And they've had the wrong brush. So always figure out what brush you need for your dog's coat. And if your dog is all matted, yeah, they won't like the brush at all. You gotta start over once your dog is shaved. You start brushing every day, even when the hair is short, and you praise your dog. You just do a little bit at a time. You just start on the back, you know, then down the legs and the feet, the face. Always praise your dog. Never yell at them or hit them. I'm just going to clip this foot here. Using my 7 up. I'm glad I can get it off with the 7 up. Is that to get a little knot right there? You got a tight knot, huh? I'll use my other blade. There we go. Yay! We're getting somewhere. All right, so I went ahead and I shaved the other side. I was just just the same as the other side. I didn't want to make the video twice as long, but I just want to show you how I'm doing the um, his rump area. He's got a big, huge knot here. So again, I'm using my actually my 30 blade. And I am just going really um, lightly because this is a very sensitive area and it's more likely that the dog is going to go home and um, you know scratch itself like rub itself on the carpet but I'm going really lightly there's actually still some hair there but I have to get under the knots but I'm not pressing to go to the skin and there it comes there we go Imagine that on your butt. There, oh. See, he's still got hair there, so that's a good thing. 
and but he's got these major mats right here so I'm gonna do the same thing Again, I'm not pushing on the skin if I don't have to I'm kind of just trying to get off those mats without having to go right to the skin and they, it came out so he still has some fuzz there which is a good thing and then more mats on this tail I might be able to brush some of these out what I do is I take my thinning shears these are nice thinning shears and I just make a couple of cuts a couple of uh, cuts under the mat two or three or four whatever you think will work so what the thinning shears is doing is it's just cutting it doesn't cut all the hair it's cutting some of the hair which means when you brush it there'll be some hair left so let's just give it a try if she freaks out I'm not gonna this is my debanding brush If it doesn't come out, I will just make a few more cuts, like for this one. I don't even think I got that one yet. This one, I'm going to make a couple more cuts. She's probably not going to have very much hair left on her tail. There, see how they come out? They just come right out because I've made uh, some cuts. That way the tail doesn't need to be totally bald because when you shave a dog's tail, it feels weird to them when they freak out and run around and go hide under the couch and whatnot. So if you can leave a little bit. And then again, sometimes when you leave a little bit, what happens is the dog can actually feel um, the air now on its skin. It's okay, sweetie. Come here. And when the tail uh, touches the back, like when they're wagging their tail or putting their tail up, it might tickle them because they're not used to that because they had hair there before. So it could turn either way. So I'm just getting out this little bit of hair. Very, very good. So I'm not pulling. I'm not really pulling. It's just coming out as I brush. Because remember I made lots of cuts, right? So it's coming out. There we go. I'll probably trim that up a little bit. There. So that's a little bit better than shaving it, uh, you know, right off. All right, now I gotta groom her head and her ears. Now her ears are pretty matted, like I showed you earlier. What I'm gonna do is separate her her un unmatted hair and uh, probably clip this. Yeah, I'm gonna use my number 30. So I'm just gonna clip a little bit at a time again because what happens is the blood rushes to the ear uh, because uh, it's been so tight. But this mat up here seems pretty loose. And I want to try to save some because uh, I don't want her to have problems. So what I'm going to do is shave off this mat. This, this is still matted. I think that, uh, let me just see something here. If this brushes out, it would be even better. Alright, so I'm just going to spray some dematting spray. No, no, I don't want to get in your eyes. And underneath, actually what I'm going to do is, see it's like, like an operation here. <laughs> and I charge a lot more uh, for this groom than I do a regular groom. This is like, almost like doing surgery, you know. I'm just clipping a little bit from the underside. big knot there. Just a little bit, kind of in half. And now I want to see if I can brush some out. So you've already cut some on the bottom there. Just got to really worry about the ear, you know. You got to be very, very gentle. And the reason I want to leave some hair is because if she shakes her head, like I mentioned before, she can get hematomas, and if you leave the hair, it'll be like a cushion for her, and she won't get a hematoma. See, some of it's actually brushing out. And again, I'm not slapping on the skin. I, I can feel what I'm doing. You don't want to be scraping along the skin. I'm actually going to cut that a little bit right there. 
there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, I can feel her end of the ear, her end of the ear. It's actually way up there, so I'm just going to cut it in half. She's actually got small ears. This is all just hair. It's coming out. There, and now we won't have trouble, but right here is really nice, knotted. Just going to trim the edge slightly. I'm trying to leave hair on the actual tip. This is the edge of the ear. And you have to be careful brushing this kind of hair because uh, if you keep brushing it over and over and you, like you hit the skin, it'll cause redness or bleed if I pull out the knot too aggressively. See this? This is her tip of the ear, I believe. Now, so. I love that spray. It really helps in getting out the knots. There. I think it's out. Yeah, well, anyways, I'll be able to work with that after. Just that's that one little knot right there. It's a stubborn knot. There, that'll be better. <laughs> there, I don't have to shave your ears now. Yay! This is part of her ears too. There. So she won't get hematomas. She's very severely matted behind her ears. I can just feel how tight that is, so I'm not even going to try my 7 up. I'm going to use my 30 here. And again, I'm doing it really light. I'm not pressing. Crescent. <laughs> what a good dog, eh? Wow. Amazing. You're better than some of the dogs that get groom regularly. Mm -hmm. I like you. Good girl. Get some treats after? I don't want to get her wild up too much. When I do talk to the dogs, I tell them that they're good and everything, but if you keep talking to them and talking silly, they're just going to start acting silly and won't sit still. So sometimes it's best not to talk to them and just say, good dog, but I'm talking the whole time to you. For all she knows, I'm talking to her. Because they don't understand, you know, too many words. They just understand the tone. And my tone is okay, I believe. Should be okay, I'm not yelling. So I'm just going to lift up her good hair that's not matted and just shave off the big chunks there. Little strokes. There we go, baby. Wow. It's like it never ends. There we go. It's a big chunk. Alright, so I went ahead and I did the other ear. So I'm really happy that I don't have to shave that off. If you have a chance to save any part of the ear, um, you know, with the mats, do so because that way they won't get the hematomas and we can't blame you for doing that as a groomer. And if you're a groomer watching this, make sure you have a, a policy, a matting policy. You want to, the owners to sign a policy, you know, saying anything that couldn't go wrong, like the hematomas, the dog will be hiding, scratching, um, any redness, any sores you find on the skin is, they have to go to the vet. It has nothing to do with the grooming. It's what you found underneath and you have no control of what the dog will do after it gets home. The dog will look nice once you groom it, but it gets home and starts scratching. It'll be all red or all. They'll phone you back tomorrow or the next day and blame you. What you do to my dog? But, uh, you know, you, you can't you can't control that. So I'm basically just shaving his or her neck with a 30. Again, because it's really, really tight. So if you're an owner watching this, you know, you probably have to sign a matting policy 
And just remember to be kind to your groomer. And it's not your groomer's fault that your dog is in this condition. It's basically your fault. And, you know, anything can happen. Afterwards, you know, you can get um, clipper rash. It's not really burned. It's just a rash from shaving so short. If you ever shaved yourself and you get a rash, it's similar to that. The clipper does not need to be hot. It's just that it's so close that it irritates the skin. And the only thing is we have to go this close to get it off. You can't leave it there. So it's basically your fault if your dog gets problems afterwards. She's all shaved. All, all the mats are out of her. Do you matter her tail? Her head's not really that matted like the hair that I left. So what I'm going to do now is give her a really good bath, blow dryer, and then finish her up and finish her head. So let's see what she looks like after the bath. Well, she's all washed, dried. Uh, so what I did is I, I reclipped her body with a 7F. And there's uh, shorter areas, you know, where I had to go shorter, which, you know, blend in. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. It's for the comfort of the dog, right? Come here. Come here. And anyways, I clipped her whole head with a number one. And I'm just giving her a little short face here. So she looks much better, right? I know she's just shaved down, but I mean, it's much better than all those mats pulling at her skin. And I'm just gonna trim up any sticky outies. I don't worry about being too perfect when I do a groom like this because of the condition of the coat. I just wanna get the dog done and you know feel comfortable. It's a lot of uh, work on the dog as well, a lot of stress on the actual dog itself to go through that, right? And uh, it's best to groom, get your dog groomed every four to six weeks. That way they'll see it as part of life and they will like it compared to a dog who's only groomed to, to uh, once a year, twice a year, four times a year, or someone's walking upstairs. And um, they'll see it as you know, more or less punishment because they don't enjoy it, it hurts them. So you want them to be able to enjoy life, enjoy grooming, get them groomed often, let them feel special, and uh, keep them mat free. And, and please brush your dogs, brush your dogs, brush them all the time, brush them every day, at least once a week. All right, thank you for watching. I rambled on long enough. Go check out all my other um, links down below in the description. I have an Amazon page with all the grooming equipment that you can go have a look at if you want to purchase anything and it helps me make videos like this. Thanks for watching.